Hi, everyone. I'm Katie Cullen at RTX here with Shannon McCormick. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? You uh, Did you answer that? I don't know. I, didn't, I, I was like, <laughs> you're like, I'm at RTX. And I'm wait, wait, did she say how she was doing? She asked me how I'm doing. I don't, I'm already lost. It's day three of RTX. That's how I'm doing. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Good. I, I have to ask, because you said this before, camera, that you have a story about the party last night. Yeah, so um, so you guys were talking about how late you were out last night and stuff, and I was out late, um, but the last 20 minutes or so were amazing because um, Joe Nicolosi, um, the writer for uh, the last season of RVB, was waiting around. And I didn't realize this, but he's expecting a baby soon, his first one in just a couple of months. And it was me and Owen Edgerton, who are old friends, um, the director of, uh, Owen's the director of Bloodfest. And Owen came down and somehow he, as Joe was waiting for his lift, or I, he hadn't ordered the lift yet, it turned into a conversation about what to expect as a new father because Owen and I both have teens, you know, so we've been parents for a while and we terrified the ever living hell out of Joe. Eventually he ended the night by just saying, go, go away now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but it was really, it was really fun. And then we kind of like, Owen and I kind of high fived each other of like, you know, we've terrified this guy. And it wasn't our intent, but I think just talking about it extensively was, and, and <laughs> Joe even said, this is the most I've ever learned at an industry park. <laughs> so you had a really good time at yeah, the party. A really <laughs> amazing time. We trolled an expectant father. <laughs> I mean, I think you might have owed Joe one after this season yeah, of Red versus yeah, Blue. Yeah, exactly. It was turnabout. Yeah, turnabout is fair play. Uh, yeah, definitely. Speaking of that, and speaking of Red versus Blue, uh, Joe has commented that Wash's situation sprung from the idea of he's been Team Dad taking care of the unruly kids, and there's a point where the kids have to turn around and take care of the parents. Oh, that's an inter yeah. He never he never expressed it that way to to me, but I like that. That's cool. That's I was going to ask if that influenced your performance, no, but I it didn't, it didn't. Joe never told me that. Um, just you know, I mean, you know, we knew it a situation. He's dealing with some um, recovery issues, um, as it were, and um, and is a little in the dark about his own condition, and also in the dark, obviously, about how much everybody else knows about his condition, and they all have kept it from him, and you know, and so we get to see him both struggling with it in isolation, and then coming to the realization that every everybody knew and we're keeping it from him. And so it was really, my last recording session um, was, it was just really satisfying to, to record that one, so. To just kind of have the explosion and then yeah, storm out. Yeah, and just like, I mean, there's like a range of stuff. Well, so that last session was a couple of episodes. So I got to, you know, you know, do a lot of different things, which was really satisfying. You did the motivational speech and the running out in the same episode. Yeah, motivational speech, running out, and then also some of the goofball, like, hey, wait, this is me in a movie stuff, you know? And it was just like, it was kind of all over the map, which was which is always really fun as an actor. You don't get locked into one little thing or whatever. And um, yeah, and get to get to play with a lot of different notes. And it's not often you get to play a character whose lower third just says Bamf. Yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, and I, I ask you this almost every season, but now that we have time travel thrown in the mix, you could do anything. Where would you want Wash to go from here? Oh, um, hmm. It would be interesting to go, I mean, it would change everything, but like um, canon timelines isn't necessarily always RVB's strong suit. So, um, <laughs> gotcha. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but. Uh, and the sun is slightly warm. So it'd be interesting to get like if Wash could go, like what would happen if you went back and redid some of the freelancer stuff? Um, either, you know, so like, yeah, to, to go back to um, innocent, naive, dorky wash um, pre, uh, pre Epsilon and just see what, how that would have gone or if he would have gotten the right AI in the first place. Because I don't know, it, has, is it, is it settled? It's not settled in canon what AI he was supposed to get, right? It was supposed to be either Ada or Iota, but I don't think we ever figured out which was what, which. What those do and how that would have intersected with, with Wash's personality. And let me just say, the writers don't know either. <laughs> oh no, we've asked Bernie. He doesn't know, yeah, so we're just yeah, kind of like. Yeah, it's all just. Yeah, it's all just vaporware. You know, it's like whatever. <laughs> Have fun, fandom. Yeah, just well, but I mean, in some ways, that's kind of cool because like you get to fill in your own theories, and like I see stuff out there that's like you know on Tumblr or whatever that's really compelling, and it's like sounds good. I mean, you know, it doesn't um, maybe. 
So you make a habit of trolling the fans on Tumblr, I, which is hilarious. I don't do it. I don't do it um, intentionally, or I, like, or don't really. <laughs> well, or, I do it intentionally, but I do it. I hope playfully. I'm not trying to troll fans in a way that like makes them feel bad, but uh, it's. I mean, just for myself, it's also just a, a reminder to the fandom. I find it is a great way to remind them that I'm out there, you know, or take. I, I get delight out of taking people by surprise when they don't know that I have a Tumblr account and stuff like that. So. Um, so it's it's kind of it, I like to amuse myself and hopefully not like freak people out too much because um, I never I, don't, I never want to make people feel bad or I don't want to troll them in that way um, but I but I do enjoy like p- poking my head up every once in a while and just you know just clowning on people a little bit. Yeah, I don't think you've ever made anyone feel bad. You just kind of set off tiny emotional nukes, yeah, yeah, and yeah. we enjoy it in that "but why" sort of fashion. Sure. Well, and it's also you, like the y'all are so easy to to do that to. So it's like it's really easy to be like, wait till next season. It's like I don't even know what's happening next season. But if you say that, people just like take it. They just flip out, you know, because they think like something either something great or something terrible is going to happen. And it's just like it's just. It's just pushing buttons. It's just pushing buttons. I know where the buttons are. What would you say your most successful button push is? Ooh. Um, oh, man. Recently or of all time? I'm trying to think. Um, either. Both. Oh, gosh. I haven't, I haven't been super active lately. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay. All right. I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. There's some... Okay. So, like, originally... I mean, the original... The, the original one is the granddaddy of all. Because I just had a Tumblr account for my own amusement. It was just like... Hey, I'm gonna reblog images that I like, like how a lot of people use it. Um, and then somebody either sent me an ask or f- somehow forwarded it to me, or I even found it. I don't even remember the cats thing because somebody at Comic Con in 2012 had come up to me and asked me to read the wash as cats, the, like I'm Agent Washington, I love cats or whatever, which I had no clue about. Obviously, I mean I'm not I'm not in the fandom, so it's like I had no idea what was going on. So there seems to be a new one with has to do with pumpkin spice um and like and there's like don't tell shannon about the pumpkin spice and like weird like they'll send me like images of the mccormick brand pumpkin spice oh. stuff or whatever but i have no idea what it's about like i don't know if it's some like like wash is fucking a pumpkin or something or like i don't know like it seems like it's dirty um uh, but i don't and i don't care to know but i do now, now that I, I know it's out there now so i like to like respond to those when they come across my timeline um it's like hey what's up you know (laughs) i don't even know what it's about just get a pumpkin spice latte at starbucks with the name washington on it and post a picture apropos of nothing exactly thank you i've now okay i have my next troll watch out tumblr fandom so when that happens in october you're welcome (laughs) yeah i'm just having a really good time awesome um if you could time travel me what would you do? So I heard I was over on the other side. I heard Jen talking about the 1920s, and the 20s are cool. So I don't want to say the 20s though. Um, so I have always been a big like um, I've always been a big I've always been a big fan of the 17th century, um, and I think like a, say like a 16. 16- 20s 1630s like when rembrandt is young amsterdam era like the kind of like that that period of the broke is pretty exciting to me and i think that would, that that would have been cool so you just want to go watch art happen yeah exactly that'd be cool exactly that, that kind of that that golden age of dutch art making in like the 1620s and 30s you know uh, uh, vermeer and rembrandt and those guys so yeah Nice. Yeah, right? And getting all art historical on you guys. Speaking of art, let's talk about Camp Camp. I- <laughs> okay, yes. Oh, yes. In some weird ways, uh, Camp Camp is my favorite um, show that I'm in right now. It's so completely insane. It's bonkers, and the quartermaster is bonkers. And I would say um, he's my favorite character to do right now, or he's my favorite recording session right now. I mean, a lot of them are like some episodes. I mean, uh, quartermaster has like two lines, and it, they're like three words long. But um, what you may not know is uh, there's uh, well, and I think the people who saw that bloopers reel, like basically when I'm doing quartermaster, the entire recording session is done in quartermaster voice. So I just talked to Jordan and the recording, uh, the uh, the recording engineers in quartermaster voice. So they probably have ten hours of just random 
hey man you know what's going on i'm doing the thing and just i'm talking to everybody and you know okay jordan what do you got okay you know you want me to do some more lines okay i got it you know and it's just like mumbly weird <laughs> random stuff so i i love doing i love doing quartermaster I need that on like the special edition Blu-rays or whatever when they come out. Did you go to the panel? Like we I, did. I didn't see it. I heard there were some blooper reels, and like it was me like not finding the voice right away or something. Somebody was telling me about it that I was like, wait, no, that's not it. Where we gotta, gotta get the voice dialed in or whatever. I mean, that's like every recording session, but um, yeah. I think you went a little western in that particular blooper. Oh, okay. I don't. Yeah, I don't even. I don't. I, I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know what it looks like. But um, yeah, there's. There's a there's a lot of quartermaster bloopers, or quartermaster footage that they're like, no, we can't have them say that. Yeah, like this is a really good line, but it's too extreme even for us. Uh, even, oh, or even for the quartermaster. <laughs> no, actually, no, I don't. No, that's not true. I the quartermaster is way grosser on the page than I ever am, even improvising. But um, yeah, that dude's twisted. So what happens when he completes the taunting? Um, well, so there's a whole, I think there's a bunch of quartermaster lore that we're going to see at some point. There's also a massive, it, so the quarter sister episode was one of my all time faves. Um, and there is a massive, uh, Easter egg slash thing in that episode that should be obvious that I have not seen a single person spot in the fandom at all. And Jordan and I talk about it sometimes. Like, how have people missed thing X in that episode? So you gotta go back and watch that episode um, and look for a thing because there's like a big, there's a thing in there. There's a thing. Um, yeah. I personally had a hard enough time watching it the first time oh, sure. around. Yeah. Well, what's the matter? Didn't you like it, Katie? <laughs> sure. Oh my God. When they first told me, Carrie was the, I think Carrie, I think it was Carrie's idea and Carrie first told me about it and he was like, I can't believe we're doing this, but we're going to have you play quarters. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that episode. It was wonderful in all of the best and worst oh, possible so ways. Like making out with myself was like really one of the weirdest things I've ever had to record. Did you do both parts at the same time? Did you do one no, and then well, the other? Yeah, obviously, I had to do both at the same time. I'm not like a Tibetan, you know, or like a Tuvan throat singer or something where I can like do two notes at the same time. But um, uh, yeah, no, they did it. And what I oh, I really love in that episode also is like the the crazy grumbling fight thing goes all the way underneath the score at the beginning, underneath the song, which was great because like again, that's one of those things where it's just like just keep rolling. We'll just do a bunch of fight sounds, and they like and then I love that they found a way to use it. It was hilarious was pretty great i'm i have to know has the quartermaster ever been to super guantanamo super guantanamo uh no probably not well who knows i yeah i don't know uh i don't know oh my god i, I feel like i have so many more questions and i'm not sure if that's a rabbit hole i want to go down or not about quartermaster, about quartermaster. Yeah, no, just i mean i think it'll just you know as long as the series come the series is being made there'll be like little there's not like some it's not like some big culminating overarching story but there's just like fun things that I think will be like dripped and dropped out over this course of the you know however long the series lasts Hello, one more for quartermaster what other hand attachments do you think he has Ooh, oh well, I don't know can we say it on the even on the internet no I look we've already I, seen the purple dildo yeah uh I don't I mean you know like a wine opener and uh you know I don't know what else like a like an old like a egg beater kind of thing or what I don't know what else he has so he's got all kinds of stuff. Flamethrower. <laughs> I'd love to see an outtake where one of them is the cinder puppet from Ruby Chibi. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really awesome. That's a nice Easter egg idea, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Go to it, fans. Whatever else the Quartermaster could have, he probably has one. Use your imaginations. He's already a Time Lord. It's like a pumpkin spice latte dispenser or something. Speaking of fans, um, a couple years back, I believe it was, you said that you wanted Wash to have a cat shelter slash brothel. Yeah, yeah, that I think that got memefied a little bit um, out there on the internet. Someone made it in The Sims and sent uh, it to me. That's right, that's right. I think I got tagged in that. Yeah, and I was just like, oh my god, that's crazy. So um, hopefully, um, we'll stumble across some other great, awesome thing in this interview. Uh, the pumpkin spice latte dispenser quartermaster hand or whatever uh, that somebody will end up making. That's not milk. No. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, yeah, you're getting scolded. You're getting off-camera scolding. 
Excuse you. Uh. <laughs> um, yeah, let's. Speaking of characters that are more than a little creepy, let's talk about the Undertaker in Nomad of Nowhere. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, that guy's really creepy. <laughs> he tried to he tried to kill him. Like just straight up murder people. And murdering people. To, I don't know. That was a fun role to play too. Because um. Yeah, uh, just the clan, all the, you know, what's that Clarence and talking to the skull and um, he seems so nice and then he's like really horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Did you improvise anything for that? Did you bring anything to the role that wasn't already on the page? I think it was all, I'm pretty sure it was all on the page. Um, yeah, that was a really well put together episode. Um, you know, even if it's a little dark for what is ostensibly a kid's show where it's just like, that guy's trying to murder him. I think that was my phone, I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, it's like, oh, fun kid show with a murdering psychopath in a weird sex dungeon thing, you know, like, uh, this is really horrifying. With literal handcuffs. Yeah, literal handcuffs. Kid, you know, hitting people with shovels. I mean, the whole, the whole bit. Dude wants to be a necromancer, and it's yeah. kind of, the wannabes are always scarier than the professionals. And the, than the ones who know what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So we left him tied up in his own house, which was previously attempting to murder him. Do you think he'll show up again? Would you like to see him show up again? I, I mean, I don't like, so I'll be honest, I don't know what the, like, the long vision for the show is. I kind of feel the Undertaker's maybe was just like a one-off guy and that's all we'll see him. Um, but but uh, like I said, I don't know what the, what the long vision is and so he may come back if there's some deeper, longer stuff um, that's out there. We may see him again, but I don't, I don't know. We need more exposition? We either more exposition or more murdering. <laughs> Six to one, half a dozen of the other. Murder exposition stuff, yeah, yeah. Multitask. Yes, exactly, exactly. So why does Rooster Teeth keep casting you as really creepy characters? Because I do it pretty well. (laughs) And, well, I think it's, so it's a couple things. Um, I, you know, I can, I do it well. I don't object to, like, going there. And I think they can coax those performances out of me. And it's, or, like, you know, it's not a a big deal. I'm not, like, oh, I don't know, guys. That's too weird. Um... Yeah, I think I just I think that's as much it as anything. I mean, once you hit vampire dentist, everything is just kind of gravy. Right. Well, I realize so I'll probably talk about this in the voice actor panel. It's like with the exception of Wash, who isn't creepy, um, but all of my characters, including Wash, have a certain kind of. Well, this person seems to be some kind of cursed to immortality kind of role, you know? <laughs> They're all like, oh, they can't die, but I don't know if that's good. <laughs> that is trust, a really- I, Trust me, I, 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 this is my own personal theory, but I do think that the Quartermaster is some kind of bizarre, immortal Time Lord kind of a guy. You know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why we're all wondering about that taunting. That taunting, yeah. I'm gonna get that taunting, tell you what. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to say to the fans? Um, just, hey, keep being awesome. I love interacting with you guys both online and um, here at RTX and other events and things like that. So, um, yeah, you guys are the best. And uh, I look forward to seeing you every year at this event. And do you have any projects that you're working on that you can tell us about? Um, nothing that I'm working on that I can tell you about, but I do want to encourage everybody who's not a first member um, to check out Day 5 when it comes out um, in uh, a broadcast in the UK and on cable in uh, in the in the US. So it's uh, at the end of August. Um, uh, it's going to uh, Sky in in the UK, and that's like broadcast TV, which is amazing. And then um, if you have El Rey, um, uh, it's coming to El Rey Network in um, in October. And if you don't have El Rey, talk to your local cable provider and ask them to put El Rey in your basic cable package. Can I hire you for my next commercial? Because sure, that was that was yeah. a thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Whatever you know, whatever you want, I'll do it. <laughs> do a com- just like yeah. I need a commercial done in the quartermaster voice. Oh, Can we? Yeah. Oh hell <laughs> no. yeah! I would do that. I would do that. I, yeah. I don't know if anybody buy your product, but I'd do it. I'd do the voice. I mean, one for the Rooster Teeth store. Uh, sure. Yeah. 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 All right, RT. That's a free idea for you. Yeah. yeah there we go. Hey, come on down. And get yourself a hook or something like that. You know, you just get a hook. And put it on your hand or wherever you want to put it. <laughs> well, on that note, thank you so much for talking with me. You're welcome. And thank you guys for watching.